Let's have a look at some practical problems. So, ready? Yes. Um, here, or we can give you a second. So, for this last topic on vectors. Thank goodness for that. Um, we're looking at practical problems. So this is where we have a problem, like in physics, we have to state the problem as vec in vector form, and then when it's in vector form, we can answer the question. So in this question one, as an example. Yeah, so you have a crossroads, and you have two cars heading to the crossroads, correct? <laughs> what? I didn't draw any cars yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a crossroads, there's two cars heading to the crossroads. So how fast are the cars going? One car is moving at the constant speed of 10 meters per second. Yeah. And the other is moving at 30 meters per second. 10 and 30. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we'll draw the first car here. Isn't this X going towards it or going away? I thought the two cars are heading towards the crossroads, is it? Um, what word do I use then? Okay, what, what two cars are 100 meters from... <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, they, <laughs> they're heading towards each other, otherwise the question is not interesting if they're leaving the crossroads. Um, Yeah, okay, fair enough, yeah. They're heading towards the crossroads, not away from it. The story would be over if they left. Uh, so the first car is 100 metres from the crossroads, and it's moving at 10 metres per second. <laughs> right. And then... Oh, actually, both cars are 100 metres from the crossroad. And how do you know it's not all of it? Well, it if there was, then there'd be no need for me to say it was a crossroad. It'd just be a road. And for what I ask you, you can know. Because if they were heading towards each other, what's the shortest distance between them? It would be zero when they meet. Uh, so here, uh, this one is going at uh, a speed of 30, 30 meters per second. Huh? And the final exam, there'll be a picture. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there'll be a picture. There's just not space for me to have a picture. Anyways, no, because I don't need it for every question. Yeah. Um. So which car will get to the crossroads first? The red one. The red one. Yeah. And then the blue one um, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is there's a distance between them. Mm -hmm. uh, but this distance is getting shorter, will the distance ever be zero? No. No, no because they never meet. Yeah. The only time they had a chance to meet was where? Okay. At the okay. junction, yeah. And do they meet at this junction? No. No, because the red one gets there first. So this question is, what's the first part? At what time would they be at shortest? Yeah, so the first one is, when will they be closest together? And it won't be, a, it, like, I mean, maybe it would be when the, you know, for example, the blue car is nearly at the crossroad and the red car is down here. Maybe this is the shortest distance. Or maybe it's when the, maybe it's at the beginning it's the shortest distance. Or maybe it's when the blue car is over here and the red car is down here. You know, um, we don't know. Not when. Yeah, it doesn't matter on the other side. We don't know. We need to find it, okay? So what we do is we do this problem as uh, vectors. So we imagine this here as the origin O. And if you look at this car, it's traveling along a um, straight line here. Yeah. Use blue color. Uh, that doesn't make more sense, actually. So use a blue color here. So yeah, this is one of these problems like equation of the line. We want a vector which points to this car. Yeah? We'll call this one R1. 
And then here is the red car. We want a vector here which is R2. R2. And we care about which vector? Not R1, not R2, but what vector do we care about? R1, R1 R2. We want this vector to have a minimum magnitude. Right, does that make sense? Right, so our first business is to find the vector R1. Now you can actually, you don't need to use any special formula. If you just think about it, you can work it out. Does it have any J or K value? Yeah. No, it's only on a horizontal axis. I'm saying that it would be minus 100 plus 10 T. Now think about why that makes sense. When T is zero, what do I get? Okay, minus 100, zero, zero. Is the car at minus 100 at the beginning? Yeah. One second later, where's the car? Minus, uh, minus 90. Because minus 90, yeah. it moved 10 meters in one second. Yeah. So if I put T as 1, do I get minus 90? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this makes sense for R1, yes? Now what about for R2? Well, the I is 0, and the K, minus 0. Yeah, yeah. we can just do I and J like this. So the J, yeah, what's the J? But it's not like this. I'm going to call this I and this J. Okay. And I'm, I'm just, you know what, I can just forget about the K. I don't need to have it even written down. So I'll just put this as a zero. And, uh, yeah, okay, so no, no K. Right, so what's the J here? Um, minus 100 plus... No. 100 plus... Minus 30t, because it starts off at 100, and then one second later, where is it? Um, it's at uh, 70, yeah. yeah. Why is it not the same? Like because minus 100 plus because where is it at the beginning? Minus. No, this is positive 100. You know x, y? Mm -hmm. oh. But this is negative 100. Mm. Yes? <laughs> yes? 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 All right. Do we want R1 and R2? No, what do we really care about? R1, R2. No. Yeah, the vector. R1, R2. The, this vector. R2 minus R1? Yes. So that would be R2 minus R1. Which will be 100 minus 10t, 100 minus 30t. That's not the right, okay. uh, Minus here. Minus? Yeah. R1, R2 is R2 minus R1. Like AB is B minus A. Yeah. Now, do we care about this vector? No, what do we care about? We care about... Magnitude. We want the magnitude. So the magnitude is... Kaboom. The magnitude is square root 100 minus 10t squared plus 100 minus 30t squared. Yes? Now, let's, um, let's expand this. 100 minus 2000t. Oops. Ah, now the colour come back. You're doing so well. Alright. Why is it? Hmm? Where is it? I'm expanding. But you have a 200. Oh, sorry, yeah, there's a square on that. I didn't write yet. Well, I'll write all the zeros in. 10000 minus 2000t. Mm -hmm. No. 10 into 10. Hmm? 10 into 10. 10 Hang on. Right. Now this is right. Uh, 2 0 0 0 t plus 1 
zero, zero t squared. Yes, I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> right, um, so the next part here will be plus one zero 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 minus six zero 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 t plus nine hundred t squared. Let me clean that up. So the magnitude of R1, R2 would be square root 20,000 minus 8,000 t plus 1,000 t squared. So magnitude of R1, R2, actually I should write it properly, 1,000 t squared minus 8,000 t plus 20,000. Now this is the formula for the distance between the two cars at any time. So for example, when the time is zero, what's the distance between them? Mm, not quite. The time is zero. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is one four one. One hundred and forty one, is it? One four one meters. When you put t is zero, you get 141 meters. Now, one second later, I'll tell you the distance. So, if t is one, they are 114 meters apart. Okay, so they start off 141, and then one second later, they're 114 apart. So they're getting closer. How can we find the minimum distance. Look. Look up. Put the calculator down. I'll call the distance between them um, capital D. So the distance between them is given by this formula. How can I find when the distance is minimum? Levels. Hang on. Capital D. So this is the formula for the distance between the two cars. How can I find when this distance is minimum? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I think you can do that by two ways. Yeah. One of them is like to get t there, okay? Just factorizing, just factorizing. Get t and then. Uh, this has no roots. Has no roots. No roots. So apply the formula. Because <laughs> the distance, the dis no, it has no roots. The distance is never zero. Okay. So use the calculator. T one. And see the distance, T2. Yes, T2. you could do this, but this is not precise. But yes, you could do this, that's it fine. It would take too long. It would take too long. Mm, I don't know. So do we have another way? Yes. yes. How do you find a minimum when the derivative is zero? This is from semester one and semester two. So we want the derivative to be zero. Okay. So if I just go to the side for one moment, let me just show you a little trick. Uh, look at these numbers here. Zero, one, uh, no, hang on, let me start with a big number. So we'll say 10, 9, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10. Which number is the minimum? The first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh fourth. number? The fourth number is the yeah. minimum. Agreed? Yeah. Now, look at these numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 100, 81, 64, 49, 64, 81, 100. Which is the minimum? The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth number? Four. So even if you square the distances, the time will be the same. That the time when the minimum happens is the same time as when the minimum squared happens. This is a useful trick because it means that you can forget about the square root. You can just calculate the minimum d squared. Mm -hmm. Now this is extremely easy to do. What's the derivative of this quadratic? Twenty, no, two thousand. Sorry, two thousand t minus eight thousand equals zero. So the minimum happens at exactly 4 seconds. If you take this answer, we could check it, I'll do it right now. If you take this answer and put it back in here, you can get the distance. You can do this. Hmm? 
Where? 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 Which slide? One of the square on the D. Huh? I'm confused. Are you happy with this? Yeah. And this? Are you happy with this? Or not? Yeah. yeah. You're not going to bring back. Oh, I'm putting the T4 in here. Yeah, the distance. Or in here, whatever. No, no I mean like to the organ. Is it okay? Yeah, the details. So let's have a look at the distance um, second by second. Okay? So um, I'll just need you to give me the formula in one second. So I'll put the times down the x, uh, the first column, and the distances between them around the second column. I think you just need to check that the second before and after. Yeah, but I'd like to graph it. Uh -huh. um, right, let's have a look. Right, so we'll start with the times. We'll go from 0 to 10 seconds. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right, what's, and this is the distance. Uh, what's the formula? Uh, Square root. 1,000 weight times t yeah. squared, yeah? 8,000 t. 8,000 t. Right, so, uh, and we'll round it as well to, um, I don't know, zero decimal places. So it starts off 141 metres, then the second layer is 114 metres, then it's 89 metres, then it's 71 metres, then it's 63 metres, okay. then it's 71, 89, 114, 141, and it's getting further apart now. Now, if you calculate the d squared, You can see that the minimum d squared, of course, is at exactly the same time as the minimum distance. So it makes sense that the time is 4 seconds. Um, so we get 4 seconds is when they're closest together, and the distance is 63 meters when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. The first step was very good. The first step? Yes. First step of this question. I think I'll do as another example number four, mm. and then I'll let you try some. Do you have this? Continue? Right. So the next question now. Uh, what you have... So, um, uh, we have our graph here. And then we have... Uh, yeah, number four, isn't it? And then we have a ball which is thrown up in the air. Like this projectile. And then um, I give you the formula for the vector which points to where the ball is. This is number four. Hmm? This is number four. I think it's number four, isn't it? Yeah. So I tell you that or is equal to what's the formula for or? Uh, 3t. 3t i. Plus yeah. 4t minus 5t squared j. So this is the OR. Now if you notice the angle, the angle is changing. You see here? The angle is changing with the ground. 
My question is, what is the formula for um, cos the angle? So what's the form for cos the angle? Uh, it's not the same as torn once. Yeah. yeah. So, so why is it made like this? Because this isn't it being launched, this is pointing to its motion at different times. Oh. Think of this like a video. Uh, yeah. So the ball starts here, mm. and then starts here, and then moves along. You know, it's a video. It's pointing to its motion as it moves in the sky. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So we want here um, the cos of the angle uh, that the ball makes at the ground. So how can I state this as a vector problem? Yeah, it's an A dot B. Good, yeah. So what is the A, so to speak? Uh, the OR. Yeah, and what's the B? <coughs> what's the B? Minus R. No. Well, what do you want the angle between? The OR and the ground. The ground. So what vector represents the ground? There is no vector G, and not J. Vector I is on the ground. Yeah? So what is vector I? That is um, 1, 0. That's vector I. That's a horizontal vector. Is it given? Hmm? Is it given? No, no, you know this. This is vector I. So OR dot I then times magnitude of i. Now, i is a unit vector, so what's its magnitude? Well, come on, what's the magnitude of i? How long is i? It's one unit, yeah? So this is gone. So if you dot this now with i, you know, or dot i, what do you get? Thank you, Tech, in 3T. So on the top you have 3T, and then on the bottom you have square root 3T squared plus 4T minus 5T squared. Square. Square. Squared. Square. So if you wanted to know the angle <coughs> at any time, it would be cos inverse this. And that's, and that's this one, yeah. E yeah, when I do <laughs> it. <laughs> so this is a formula to give you the angle between the ground at any time. Okay, I've done two examples now. So a lot of these questions is about um, shortest distance. Now there is another way to do um, shortest distance as well. I wonder if I could do it that way for this one. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. 
we can do a makeup one maybe to show you. We'll do something kind of. We'll do, we'll do something kind of simple. I know what we'll do. I know what we'll do. So we'll do something a bit like a crossroads. Oops. Wake up. Students and notebook. Oh, come on. There we go. Right, so uh, let's have a look at an, one more example. So we have a uh, crossroads again, or not really a crossroads, just a field or whatever. And there's a, uh, it can be an ocean, and there's a boat, and the boat is moving along a path like this. And maybe this is the lighthouse. Okay. So the lighthouse sees the boat here, then it sees the boat here, then it sees the boat here, and so on. Top for you, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll, I'll give you the formula. I'll say that the position of the boat at time t um, will be t and then 1 over t, where t is more than 0. So this is the position of the boat. It can be in kilometers if you want, km, and the t can be in hours. Yes, I just did. So the boat comes in along like this path. And the question is, what is the shortest distance um, between the boat and the lighthouse? When are they closest together? Okay, so again, I, I suppose there's no... I'm going to do it the same way because it's the easiest way to do it. Um, so what do you want to be minimum here? Yeah, you want the magnitude of R to be minimum. What is the magnitude of R? Square root T squared plus 1 over T squared. Do we care about the square root in this calculation? No. And this will be T minus 2. This thing, you know, like don't care about the scale, can go with any other when calculating shortest distance? Yes. Now let's calculate the derivative. So what's the derivative here? 2t minus 2t minus 2 minus yeah. equals 0. So your job now is to solve this equation. 2t minus 2 over t cubed equals 0. So you need to solve 2t equals 2 over t cubed. The 2's cancel, yeah. So t4 equals 1. So what does t equal? 1. If you put that back in here, you get the minimum is, whoops, the minimum is uh, Square root 2, 1.41 kilometers. Kilometers. Yeah. T can be minus 0. No, I said t must be more than 0. That's why I said it at the start, because I knew you would say that. <laughs> See, I'm thinking 10 steps ahead. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like the cross... In fact, it's easier than the crossroads. Why is it easier than the crossroads? There's just one thing that's moving. Much easier than when there's the two cars moving. Going to the crossroads. Yeah. Um. Let me just check the something here for you. Did you bring like all all math in the in the two? I bring just part one and part two. Did you bring what? Yeah, but everything is in my 
Hang on, let me just check something here. Um, workbook, uh, maths part two, do we have a syllabus here? No. Um, can you give us a syllabus? I can, but it's a really bad syllabus because it's a new course this year and the syllabus is really, really bad. Really, really bad. No, because you know. No, no. Well, You're thinking it'd be useful? Uh, yeah, because. But it's not. Colin yesterday, he was like, I, he said, how, like, you know, he was frustrated, like, you came, like, hour and 20 minutes later to physics class. I was like, yeah. So he was like, this is not the way to prepare, you know, like, that we just have five minutes. Uh, so you'll ask me how are you doing, you know, like the video and stuff. I said, I said, I printed all the parts for them practicing. So he said, that's not the way because in labor there's something that hasn't come up yet, but you need to know that you know what. Well, it's different for physics and for maths. So for the physics, the syllabus is good. And the syllabus would be useful if you wanted to use it. But the maths, I worry, would confuse you because there's mistakes in it. In the syllabus? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so my point is, if you want the syllabus for physics, I'll happily print that, just come to the office. Okay. But I'm very reluctant to print the syllabus for math because I think it will do more damage than good. Okay. Because myself, Joan and Roland, you know, it's our experience that helps us to make the course from the syllabus. If I gave the syllabus to you as a student, parts of it aren't clear because there's mistakes in it. But the physics, you know, is yeah, quite I good. Check, I can make a play with it. I'm checking it. So I can check yeah, it. yeah. Now, hang on. Let me just get the, um, the um, maths here. Karar. Yes. Don't yes. make me angry. What the fuck? Karar. Now, let me show you the syllabus part on vectors, okay? For maths. For maths. So if I just jump down to vectors, <coughs> right, uh, where, where's vectors here, yeah here we go. So um, scalar and vector, vector addition and subtraction, now look, this is what we're actually doing today by practical problems, apply vectors to problems in mechanics, that's today's lesson. Write vectors in I and J form, which we've done. We've done 3D vectors, and we've done, now this engineering and mechanics business, I put that in one lesson, I just called it practical problems. Um, unit vector, we've done, the clarify the difference between a general vector and a position vector, that's, you know, the Euclidean vector, and the position vector and the just regular vector. Uh, apply vectors. <laughs> apply vectors to geometric proofs. We've done that one today. The vector equation of the line. The angle between two lines. Where two lines meet. And the perpendicular distance from a point to a line. Now, so many of these are on the same lesson. For example, the, um, the angle between two um, lines, the equation of the line, and the distance from a point to a line, that's all on one worksheet, which one? The equation of the line. So the equation of the line, together with the proofs and the mechanics problems, those three worksheets represent basically everything in the exam for vectors. So the two lessons today and the last lesson, if you can, uh, if you can do these three lessons, that's enough for vectors for the exam. Because the topics before that were just building the ideas to these things which are in the exam. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Let's see. So what we have left to do is the normal distribution and
the statistics, basically. Yeah. Can, how many pages are left now after this, please? Oh, no, no, no. Like 14. Or less than that, like 15.